Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening to Mr Johari and to all uh, to all uh, to all MOs and to all my colleagues. Today I'm Muhammad Hadi uh, uh, will be presented management of labor uh, efficient. Uh, this topic uh, supervised by by Dr uh, Dr Wan Khalif Ahna. And then uh, this uh, this topic is generally literally more on medical side, but we also we also will be discussing more on the surgical part side for the malignant pleural effusion. Okay, uh, basically pleural effusion is accumulation of the fluid in the pleural space. It's a uh, pleural space is space lie between the lung and chest wall, contain the thin layer of fluid. Uh, fluid comes from capillary and remove via lymphatic and the parietal layer. This is the anatomy area. Uh, this is the anatomy of the uh, of the lung. So then, uh, the chest, uh, the fluid, the fluid accumulation is between the uh, diaphragmatic line uh, within this area for the uh, pleural efficient of the uh, what of the collection. Okay, uh, there are two types of the uh, pleural effusion: there's a transudative and exudative. Transudative is a uh, alter hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure, usually presented in a patient who has a, who has a history of the heart failure, cirrhosis or nephrology syndrome, and exudative is uh, caused by increased cap capillary permeability or reduced lymphatic drainage, and this can cause such as inflammation, bacterial pneumonia, malignancy, viral infection, and pulmonary embolism. Uh, this, uh, this is the diaphragmatic uh, show that the exudate and transudate. Uh, exudate common causes are paramnumonic malignancy, pulmonary embolism, subphenic abscess, uh, and transudate is often uh, caused by left ventricle failure, portal hypertension, hypoalbuminemia, and peritoneal dialysis. Okay, to the approach to the pleural effusion. Uh, first, uh, when we encounter the patient with the pleural effusion, we need to we need to the uh, precise history provide to provide information about the possible etiology of the pleural effusion and need the investigation such as for the fever, how long the patient had a fever, any history of cardiac or renal liver impairment, any history of pneumonia such as uh, any uh, previous history of TB or is it on current any on any on medication, history of chronic hepatitis, alcoholism with cirrhosis loss of appetite and loss of weight, any recent trauma or occupational hazard history. Uh, okay. As, uh, in symptom patient with a pleural effusion, most commonly they are asymptomatic, uh, asymptomatic in very minu in the minimal pleural effusion. However, when the symptoms become become moderate to severe, patient most commonly often with the symptom of this this dyspnea cough, which is mild and non productive, and then also presented with the pleural pleuritic chest pain and characterized by shock and stabbing and exacerbate with the deep inspiration. Uh, there is also some extra pulmonary symptom which is not, not related to the lungs such as lower limb edema, orthopnea, paroxysm nocturnal dyspnea, night sweat, fever and weight loss. Okay, for the physical examination, uh, uh, First, uh, the basic the basic uh, basic physical examination we do is it inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. For inspection, we can see that patient is very tachypneic and then very very uh, with a, with very high respiratory effort. For the palpation, uh, there is a presented with asymmetrical chest ex expansion, diminished and delayed expansion on the side of effusion. For the percussion, uh, there is a dullness sound, and then for the auscultation, it's a di diminished inaudi inaudible breath sound. And also plural as presented with the plural rub. Okay, the basic investigation is a blood taking ABC to any uh, blood count to see any evidence infection such as the race of total white cell, RP, and the impression the uh, impression of the renal impairment, LFT, and liver and liver impairment. Imaging is uh, this the gold uh, gold standard lah to diagnose the pleural effusion, which is uh, from the chest X-ray. Uh, chest X-ray, ultrasound, and CT. Uh, ultrasound are also the second commerce, but it's mostly mostly used to locate the to locate uh, the uh, the pleural effusion site for for do pleural pleural tapping. So uh, CT thorax uh, is not is not sus uh, primary used to detect pleural effusion, but more to detect any if there is any any suspected mass or any atelectasis of the lung. And then uh, next is a thoracocentesis. It's a more to diagnostic uh, 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 tri diagnostic treatment, which is we can get the investigation and also relieve, uh, relieve, uh, uh, relieve the symptom and really the cause of the pleural effusion. The other investigation we can do, uh, we can we can offer is the echo and then also biopsy if the, if the patient is sus suspected for the TB or malignancy. 
Okay, uh, this is chest X-ray. We can compare that patient, uh, patient with the normal chest X-ray. You can see we're very, very clear, uh, very clear compared to the, uh, this patient with the severe pleural pressure on the right side. We can see there is a hyper echoic of the of the uh, of the chest uh, right side chest of the uh, right side of the chest of the lung. Okay. And then for the ultrasound thorax, uh, as we can see, this uh, from the view. Uh, this is a patient with the normal and then uh, the blue vision we can see there's a hypoechoic uh, which is uh, the water uh, you see it's a water lah, from this side and then the CT thorax uh, see this effusion uh, in this side okay next uh, we're talking about the malignant pleural effusion uh, malignant pleural effusion uh, are the second the leading cause lah, or the para after para pneumonia effusion it cause uh, of exudative exudation. Uh, so talk some of the patient are initially asymptomatic. The majority will eventually dis develop dyspnea at rest. Likewise, the pleural malignant pleural effusion is associated an average survival of four to seven months. The treatment for the MPE is uh, to aim to relieve the dyspnea and minimally invasive manner and ideally minimize repeated procedure and interaction with the healthcare system. Okay, uh, from the, this actually, this topic is based from the, from the article from the American Thoracic Society uh, Journal. Uh, they, uh, they give uh, seven, uh, seven types of, uh, uh, seven types of uh, demography, which is from the PICO, uh, a short voice is the PICO. P uh, PICO is the population intervention comparator and the outcomes of format. Okay, uh, in the PICO one, is a patient with a known or sus suspected MPE. So we say uh, they suggest an ultrasound imaging used to be uh, to guide the plural intervention for the plural intervention. PICO two is a patient with known or suspected MT who are asymptomatic. The thoraco, uh, the plural type should not be performed. And then the uh, type 3, simple patient with the symptomatic uh, MPE suggests the large volume thoracosynthesis. However, if it's uncertain whether the patient's symptoms are related to the efficient and or if the lung expandable, the latter if pleurodocyte is contemplated to assess the lung expansion. Next, the PICO4 is a symptomatic with MPE with known or likely suspected expandable lung. Uh, uh, we can use an, in, an inwelling pleural catheter or chemical pleurodesis to be used as the first line definitive pleural intervention for the management of the dyspnea. Uh, the PICO5, patient with symptomatic MPE and expandable lung undergoing tap pleurodesis suggests that uh, either use a tap uh, using the tap, uh, tap as the as the as the uh, substance for the uh, plural plural disease. Okay, next uh, type six a patient with symptomatic malignant perfusion with not expandable lung, failed plural disease or localized effusion suggests that use of uh, inwelling catheter over the chemical plural disease. And the last one in patient with uh, inwelling plural catheter association. Uh, the removal is usually adequate. Suggest to uh, suggest to remove the if, if the infection fails to improve the the outcome of the dyspnea of the pleural effusion for of the patient. Okay, uh, this is the well chart. Uh, if the uh, when it, if there is a uh, one patient we encounter who has a uh, non or sus suspected malignant pleural effusion, if he is MC, if he is asymptomatic, no, uh, there is no need for the pleural intervention. If he is symptomatic. We use first the ultrasound to guide the thorax synthesis. Is there any improvement in dyspnea? If it's no, investigate for another cause of the dyspnea, such as uh, from the heart, uh, for, uh, any heart failure or any other symptoms re uh, relating to the dyspnea. If the yes, and then uh, yes, and uh, improvement, so then lungs are re uh, uh, expand. So, so uh, lung expansion, yes, and then discussion of the relative risk benefit of IPC, of catheter, pleural disease versus combination of the approaches. Okay, if it's not predicted very short survival, uh, this patient are uh, very predicted very short survival. Lah. So then uh, we can refer to the palliative team for, for thoracosynthesis you need there, and then support of oxygen and morphine. And then uh, if not predicted for very short survival, consider of another, uh, another catheter lah. and then uh, in another catheter. Okay. And then uh, if the if lungs able to re, uh, re expand after the catheter, consider the drainage as guided as a symptoms of the local protocol. Uh, if yes, consider daily drainage or or, or tuck slurry. Okay. Uh, if the lung is uh, expansion, discuss the benefit of the 
of the catheter, fluke versus pleurodesis and combination of approaches. And then uh, can use like, the, for the pleurodesis to say the stuck slurry, evidence of any uh, inhaling catheter uh, IPC related infection, suggest so to uh, oral antibiotics and then to keep uh, to keep catheter in a place. So, thoracocentesis is the to identify the uh, is the procedure. Uh, is the procedure we uh, we tap uh, from the back, uh, which is a posteriorly approximately ten centimeter lateral to the spine, uh, which is mid scapula mid scapula line. And uh, one to two fluid. Okay. Based on a uh, uh, patient, the sitting right uh, upright and the leaning on the table, and then we tap, and then we push on the left lung, and then uh, the catheter will fill uh, the fluid space. We insert the fluid and then call it in the back in the syringe. So uh, there's the uh, uh, the fluid from the life criteria. The fluid is considered an exudate if any of the following are found: ratio of pleural fluid to the serum protein are greater than zero point five. Ratio of pleural fluid to serial LDH greater than 0 0.6 and pleural fluid LDH greater than two thirds of the upper limits of normal serum value. Uh, this is the simple chart uh, regarding the criteria of the pleural fusion, uh, transudate and versus exudate uh, protein is less than 0 0.5 for exudate more than 0 0.5 LDH is less than 0 0.6 exudate more than 0 0.6 common causes for the transudate. Uh, Heart failure, pericarditis, or hypoalbuminemia, and exudate is a malignancy, pancreatitis, autoimmune disease, or esophageal rupture, and also infection. So, uh, uh, next, uh, the management for the for the malignant pleurodesis is a pleurodesis. Pleurodesis is injected to the injects and returned to the uh, return into the space of the between the lung chest wall. There are a variety of substance that can be used. This medicine uh, irritates and inflamed tissue, produces scar tissue that makes the lung stick to the chest wall. The common types of return uh, agents are used are tap, uh, is a ster uh, steroid tap, uh, steroid tap to cause the irritant to the lung and then makes the lung stick is a very uh, very cheap expensive but can cause pain uh, can cause pain to the lung and but uh, we can we can manage it by, by giving uh, give uh, analgesia next uh, common use is the bleomycin bleomycin is a uh, uh, anti anti cancer engine used for Hodgkin or non Hodgkin lymphoma uh, it's a uh, very effective but however the the uh, the disadvantage is a very expensive drug to use as a pleurodesis. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, that's all for me and my reference from the from the Medscape and also from American Thoracic Society documents uh, regarding management of malign malignant pleurodesis. Thank you. Is there any question?